Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. I'm going to be giving you a few tips on shore fishing, beach fishing from a place called Strangles Beach, of all things. What a weird name. Who named it that? Strangles Beach. I fish them on my own as well. I can feel it tightening around my neck all the time. North Devon, just between Bude and Boss Castle on the coast there. Man alive, what a climb, what a view. I don't know what the cliffs are, 300 feet, 600 feet. I've got a feeling they might be the highest cliffs in Devon or Cornwall or something like that. They are immense. Anyway, great view looking down from the top. Not so clever, however many 752 big steps all the way down, but a superb beach, clean, clear water. When I was there, the wind was absolutely howling. I believe it was like an easterly offshore and that lifts what we call the surf, the waves. So anybody surfing, the waves there. Now you wouldn't want to go surfboarding there because there's rocks and currents and everything like that. But those currents obviously draw in a lot of food for fish. So it's a great place to go fishing. Let's get down there and see if we can't catch something. Now there's something about going beach fishing that really does, I don't know, it floats my boat. And that's difficult to say, isn't it, really, when you think you're fishing from the shore, Graham. But I don't know, is it the freedom? Is it the wild blue yonder there that you can see? Beautiful, clear water. Is that man waving on the cliff? Look at the shadow, the man waving at me. What a complete idiot. Anyway, you wouldn't want to fall down that ravine, would you, about 300 feet? Stop waving, get fishing. The walk down here, if you uh, take your time, can be really enjoyable. Don't rush down. Keep your gear to a minimum. And just look here at the beach. You can see where it's wet there, slightly on the right, shows you it's much deeper there than the two patches that are dried out on the left. So that tells me immediately the right-hand half of the beach is slightly deeper, and that's where I'm going to fish. Right at the bottom of the steps, when you get down there, down the footpath of the steps, is a rope. And that's to assist you in going the last few steps down. So, you've got to climb down. You do so obviously at your own risk. And that's why I'm just carrying two small cameras, the head cam and a tiny little pocket camera. I'm not taking the big camera down there. Just too heavy to go all down and worse on the way back. So get yourself down to the base of the beach, hanging onto the rope there. And that's what's greeting you. Beautiful surf beach, wild Atlantic water, the surf creaming in there, and as any bass angler knows, well, you've got to be in with a shout. Of course, there are other fish around as well. Small turbot, could be smooth hounds maybe in there, but I think it's probably a bit too, too rough there for smooth hounds. And you can see beautiful colors in the rock formation here, massive cliffs behind you. It really is quite an evocative place to fish. And I was there on my own, and look at the size of that boulder, guys that boulder had come crashing down because it wasn't there the last time I fished. You can see I'm walking over a slate beach there. Okay, there's the slate, the gray. Now there's the base of the land. And if you look up at the cliffs there, you can see the orange hole just about in the center now, that slightly orange patch is I believe where that huge massive boulder came crashing down. So just beware, there are loose cliffs, loose rocks up there. And it's an impressive place to fish, but by goodness me, <laughs> you've got to be careful. Anyway, I fished there with the tide coming in. As you can see, the sand is drawing in front of me. That tells me that the tide is not ebbing, it's flooding, it's actually coming in. Of course, yes, I had obviously worked it out that I wanted to fish a flood tide there. I've got a grip lead there, which you're going to need a grip lead because there's big tides here. And I'm fishing with what we call the Wessex rig, and I've got my waders on. Now, 
you really do need to weigh this because it's quite shallow early on and obviously you want to go out and meet the tide coming in so get out as far as you can before you actually make your cast that extra bit of distance can help it's not absolutely vital when you're fishing on a surf beach but over in the back there you can see there's a finger of rocks going out and I want to be sort of along the edge of those rocks thinking of who knows thornback rays bass anything can be swimming around in those waters now all of this is going to be voiceover because it is just one of those places I cannot take the big camera I couldn't put it on a tripod could I it's going to get washed away so I'm fishing with two uh, of my heavier casting rods and what I call my shotgun spinning rod down the middle there and I just cast that out and I set the drag make sure you set the drag here that's on waters like uh, this you know down here there could be anything swimming around who knows you rarely see other anglers down here it is just a superb wild place to fish admittedly the surf was a little bit bigger than I would have wanted the tide will nearly take you off your feet you can see the power on it when it floods in on a big spring tide and equally sucks you out so don't get knocked off your feet there plenty of turbulence to attract the fish it is a great spot well it's just a wild atlantic spot for fishermen to stand there in waders wondering what the heck was going to come along Now you can see I've cast out there. What I do is I leave the bail arm of my fixable reel open and I'm walking it all the way back. It's just called walk back fishing. So as I go back to where my tripod or monopod is, I can leave that line out there and get in deep water. Here comes the first fish. Oh my God, Graham, don't even touch it. Don't go near it. This, folks, is called the weaver fish. Grown men far harder than me, larger and tougher than me, have been reduced to tears by the pain caused by this fish if you grab hold of it to unhook it. It is a poisonous sea fish, one of the few we have in England. Might even be the only one we have in England, but I, I guess you count the stingrays uh, being up there as well. And it's very aggressive. Now watch, as I tap it, look at the dorsal fin. It fires up with about three spines on it. So as you reach around to grab it, those spines come up and spike you in the hand. The next visit is the hospital in tears. I just love looking at the, all those patterns in the water, all the ripples making on the sand there, because it's so clear, it's a really great place to fish. And the patterns in the rocks, and you know where you're fishing has a great impact on you when you're when you're beach fishing it gives you a sort of sense of freedom I think anyway I love going beach fishing it's one of my favorite uh, types of fishing really is beach fishing because of the unknown now here is the bait it's a sandal just cut a piece of tail off I thread it through and then I take the hook out and I measure and put the hook back in just about the actual length of where the bend starts to curve from the top of the hook put a little split in put the hook into that split, pull up the slack there, and then take some elasticated thread, which you can buy from any tackle shop, and if you can ever find the end of it, which I never can find the end of it, you're gonna bind that sand on. The most important thing I find with beach fishing with sand whatever size you're gonna use, is to make sure you keep it and you bind it on in a straight line. You do not want it bending and twisting around the bend of the hook, because in a big current, you might get a big uh, left to right or right to left current there, an undertow, it's going to make the bait spin. If it spins, it twists up, goes around your main line, goes around the snood, you know, the length of the line from your hook to your leader, and that's not good. It's not good. Finish off with a half hitch or a couple of half hitches as I do. Don't cinch it down too tight. And there you have a nice section of sandal ready to be posted out. And of course, you can use a three hook rig if you want. I was going for bigger fish uh, on this day. It was a beautiful blue day, but by golly, the wind was blowing for sure. 
and that's just a regular three hook. So I've got three sort of three half to three quarter sections of saddle. And here we go. Paid dividends. In comes a bass. Not a big fish. Of course, it's not a big fish, but any bass from the shore, I feel, is something to be celebrated. They're a great looking spe species. They look like a, what I call a fisherman's fish with that spine sticking up there. And you can see he's absolutely mullered that section of sand hill. So if you want to get bass, either ragworm or better still, I like fishing with a sand hill. And it wasn't too long before the sand hill drew in another bass, just a tad bigger, not very. Look, they're little schooly bass, but you're catching them in such wonderful surroundings there, and given that beautiful blue sky and the big surf pounding in there, it really was something. Those bass come in to get sand hills and worms that are pounded up by, you know, the big surf coming in. You need a grip lead. If you don't fish with a grip lead, I feel your, your tackle is gonna be dragged around might be into the snags or just washed into your feet. And of course with the bass, put them back, no need to keep them. Now walking around here, you can see the tides well down. There's a nice rock pool with a massive, impressive rock there. But walking in with the uh, thigh waders, look, there's as much bait here as you could want to use. Plenty of mussels. Obviously, rocks covered in barnacles. Don't cut your hands on them. Don't go climbing on them. If you fall off, you will get cut. Plenty of mussels there. So you can use those, again, with elasticated thread. They're a soft bait. Um, I personally would stick with a sandal, but if you get pushed for bait, don't be afraid to go out and get yourself some mussels. And look at that beautiful golden sand there. Nobody else on there. What fascinates me is not just the current coming in, sweeping in on a flood tide like this, but the wonderful colours of all the different grains of sand there. And I think there might be something like silica gel crystals in there. I'm not sure somebody did tell me that once, but I do like the change in seascape that you get when you go beach fishing. Eventually, the tide pushed me further and further up the beach, so the sand gave way to the broken shingle slate there, and that was getting near high water, and that's when I should expect to catch something a bit bigger. Here we go guys, a much better bass. This is what I really came for. A really nice quality bass here. That's what Atlantic surf fishing is all about. A bass like that on a sand hill, what a great species. Yes, it's gonna get put back. But that made that walk, that climb down all those steps at Strangles Beach worth it. And now, I've no idea, I'm no expert at Strangles Beach, it's just that I keep my boat down there when I go shark fishing or down that area and if I get blown off I'm going to go beach fishing if I can and get spiked by the bass as you see but give it a go there's lots of little beaches around that area and do you know what you'd be lucky to see another angler there and here the fish goes back as well. Well, I don't even know if you're going to hear this or not. It's roaring, it's immense surf running. There must be six foot rollers out there. But as it's pushed in when it got to half flood, I call that weaver, which I didn't touch. I've had three bass. The last was a real nice little bass. First two little baby schoolies. 
The other one, I don't know what it was, two and a half, three, two to three pounds. Really pleased with that on the sand hill, but I can't work out what on earth is happening with this tidal situation. It surges to the right, surges to the left. I was so close to packing up, it's unbelievable. Boy, am I glad I stayed on. The sun's going round to the west. Fabulous, very, very, very windy offshore. But, hey ho, surf has made bass, and that's what it's all about. If you've got surf, you're gonna get bass. I tell you what, I'm toughing out for at least another two hours. Why not indeed? So there you have it guys, there's a few tips on how to look for beaches, just check out the uh, uh, the rigging of the sand hill like that if you want to watch it again, I do like sand hill for bass, and of course that first most important tip is when you look at the beach, where the gullies are, which piece of sand is wet, which piece of sand is dry, the dry bits there you see on the left hand side of the pitch are shallower, the wet piece by the rocks on the right will be deeper, and you'll notice the surf doesn't break there so much either. Have a great time and don't forget to watch the totally awesome outdoor show as well.